You know, I realized while I was working on this world that I'm eventually gonna need, like, people to help me design things to make it look better. Like, I wish I could just, you know, like, bring people on board and just have them, like, design, like, really nice designs around my contraptions. That way, I could, like, just really focus on the technical stuff and have the creative people be creative. So, why don't you just make it into a multiplayer world? Question mark? What's up my roomies and welcome back to the technical guide to Minecraft and today we're going to be doing something rather unique. We're going to be migrating our single player world over to our survival multiplayer world. We'll also go into data packs as well as modding to increase the quality of life for your players as well as make some game changing mechanics to Minecraft vanilla. Essentially today is a crash course in basic admin craft. This is for people who want to actually start up their very own survival multiplayer also known as an SMP. First things first, this is for people who are going to be renting out a server instead of creating, maintaining, and building their own. There are actually many reasons to actually rent a server, including but not limited to not being able to afford or have a spare computer they could run 24-7, or life needs you to keep moving from place to place it's not possible for you to have a stationary server to operate. But fear not, there are services out there that will allow you to have your very own server space without needing to pay. And for the purposes of this video, We'll be using Eternos.me, which is a free server hosting for Minecraft, though note that the SMP that I'll be creating and working on for the technical guide won't actually be on Eternos. Generally speaking, the process to create your very own SMP are the same, and while the location of the process may differ from server host to server host, the concept is basically the same across the board. Let's say you have a world that already has a designed spawn location just like the Kika Core testing center, and you want to migrate this single player world into an SMP setting. Well, before we even get into the whole hosting server part, be sure to set the spawn location of the world by pressing set world spawn. What this will do is that it'll set the world spawn generally within this location. Not only that, but it'll also change the location of the spawning chunks. Let's head over to the area where you can upload world files. And from there, you can simply upload the world folder to the server host. And for all intents and purposes, you're done you actually have created your very own SMP. Pretty easy, don't you think? But let's say you want to add in a little more pizzazz to your server to either keep things interesting, well organized, or even just optimize game performance. Let's begin that section. Now, the reason why you would want to put in data packs or mods into your server is to give some quality of life vanilla Minecraft doesn't actually have, such as multiplayer sleep. And with those, in order to increase some quality of life or some game changing mechanics, this is where data packs and mods come in. Data packs differ from mods in that you don't need to add a modding toolchain or platform. You can insert the files directly into your world file and change certain aspects of the game. You've already seen this, having been done on the technical guide world where I've added the day counter. This allows players who don't have a modding platform nor have an interest in actually having a modding platform without having to download mods of their own. I myself have always preferred using data packs for this reason as it doesn't require my friends and fans to download anything while also gives widespread changes to the world mechanics and quality of life. This includes multiplayer sleeping, teleport commands, and many more quality of life or game mechanic data packs. Quick interruption, I know that only 10% of you actually subscribe to this channel watching this long i must be doing something right so if you like this video hit that like button and please subscribe to this channel any support helps and these videos take a bit long to make thank you so much and back to the video but know that data packs are not a substitute for actual mods these mods can include game optimization as you see me use in the technical guide such as sodium starlight and many more but not only that it can allow for deep changes to the game itself such as better minecraft mods furniture mods and many more mods that change the nature and the gameplay aspect of minecraft the difficulty of using mods instead of data packs is that you will have to choose a modding tool chain or platform that you will want to base your server and among those modding tool chains and modding platforms there are three popular choices paper Forge, and Fabric. Each of these modding tool chains have their own flavor and usages that are typically incompatible with other modding tool chains. So selecting one that is good for your server is dependent on what your needs are. If you're a beginner admin crafter, Paper is a good choice as it comes with its own optimization built in. It's relatively lightweight and it's regularly maintained and updated by its very own developers. It's pretty much plug and play and is the most user friendly amongst the bunch. The problem with Paper is that it changes the nature of certain vanilla Minecraft mechanics and you'll be at the 
the mercy of what the developers deem is what they think Mojang wants to have in their game. These include, but not limited to, bedrock breaking, TNT duping, graffiti block duping, and many more. And while there are settings to allow or disallow these mechanics, they are a bit obscure as to whether you can disable or enable them. It's also notorious for tweaking game mechanics, as well as some redstone mechanics, which for the technical players may be very troublesome. That being said though, all in all, if you're just starting off and want to have some fun casual vanilla Minecraft, this mod toolchain is probably best for you. Next we have Forge, which is known to having the most amount of mods that can radically change the game. Mods like Better Minecraft, Pixelmon, the now popular Witherstorm, and many more mods of this nature can be found using the Forge toolchain. The problem with Forge is that it's very resource intensive which can lead to lower game ticks, server side delayed response, and lag inputs from the client. And while there does exist some optimization mods that can help compensate, you have a small chance to run into some gameplay and connectivity issues. To summate, if you're looking for an SMP to have some game changing features that would otherwise not be in vanilla Minecraft, Forge may be for you. And amongst the popular ones lastly is Fabric. Fabric is a modding toolchain that focuses on optimizing Minecraft in the lightweight format. The difference between Fabric and Paper is that Fabric focuses on ensuring that in-game mechanics such as game ticks, redstone, and other game mechanics as well as mob spawning rules remain unaffected which is best for technical players like myself. As such, mods that are compatible with Fabric tend to further optimize game performance and don't tend to actually change the nature of the game. The problem with Fabric is that, due to the nature of the toolchain being dedicated to a lightweight way to optimize game performance, is that mods that change the nature of the game in this toolchain are very few. You will most likely be playing vanilla Minecraft and unlike Paper, the optimizations don't hit their peak unless the user themselves input the mods to maximize game performance. In the end, if you're a user who wants to play with friends while also being in control of game optimization and tweaks, Fabric may be for you. By now, you've probably already noticed that I didn't talk about Realms, like, at all. And there's actually a good reason for that. Realms is basically an official first-party server host rental space that Microsoft provides. The reason why I don't talk about Realms is due to the chat reporting features that exist in 1.19.1, and this is more or less my way to protest it. So, if you want to learn more about it from me, this is all I have to say about it. Don't use realms. So moving right along, for the purposes of this video, we'll be using Fabric, which is what my SMP will be running. Again, the locations may differ from host to host, but the general concept is the same. Find the location where the mod toolchain can be installed and install it. From there, locate where you can install or upload mods. On Eternos, it allows you to browse mods and install them on the site. On services like Apex Minecraft Hosting, Pebblehost, Shockbyte, and other hosting sites, you'll have to enter the FTP channel themselves, and then drop the mod jar file into the mod folder itself. From there, you just restart your server, and yeah, that's it. Away you go. You set up your own SMP world. Now go forth, my roomies, and make your own SMP. And so, having done all these steps myself, let's begin work on the Arsene SMP server. Well, my roomies, that's it for this episode. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe to see more, and I will see you all next time. But until then, I have been your number one and most humble host, Kikirumi. Bye-bye.